they create a commission to gather the people's views on the ground. Suruhanjaya Kabul yang memulakan kerjanya dalam bulan Februari 1962 menarik minat ke lima-lima wilayah. Maksud tugasnya ialah untuk menentukan pendapat orang-orang Sabah dan Sarawak terhadap pembentukan Malaysia itu dan membuat syur-syur yang sewajarnya. But during the process, the commission discovers various opinions and views from the people about the Malaysia plan. I think people were just beginning to figure out, now what does it mean to join Malaysia, right? And even the Kabul Commission, as we all know, was quite inconclusive. Who do you speak to? What were the questions you ask? And did people really understand what joining Malaysia meant? The British was pushing this line. Urban people were not in favour of it. Generally, the Malay community would have been in favour of it. The rural Dayak community, I'm not sure that they fully understand other than what the British advised them. So the British actually convinced a lot of uh, the indigenous population to go in front of the Cobalt Commission and say, yes, we will support the Malaysian Federation. There's a very famous incident where a traditional leader actually say, we will go along with whatever the British wants. While the Cobalt Commission is being held, the Sarawak United People's Party, or SUPP, makes a strong stand against the fact-finding mission. They insist that Sarawak needs its own independence first. Their view is shared by a leftist political party from a neighboring state. ICUPP had quite a good working relationship with Azahari's Party Rakyat Brunei. Both of them were very, very strong anti-Malaysia, and they really wanted to become independent first. Bonyon nationalism was more important, more relevant to them than Malaysian nationalism. So there were people who were advocating that maybe there should be a federation of the Bonyo territories with the Sultan of Brunei serving as the leader of that federation. This plan will not be accepted by the British, as it will threaten the Malaysia plan. So Azahari and SCPP actually got together, issued statements, and in fact, they wanted to go all the way to the United Nations to complain about the mighty Malaysia plan and to submit a memorandum to the United Nations. While the proposal for the Borneo Federation is hotly discussed, a crisis is brewing in Brunei. Penderahagaan di Brunei pada bulan Desember 1962 menimbulkan bukti. Sebenarnya, Indonesia lah yang membantu penderahagaan yang gagal itu. Satu percubaan, sekumpulan kecil penderahaga merencatkan kelahiran Malaysia. This communist-linked rebellion brings back memories to many Dayak communities in Sarawak. In the early 1950s, in order to combat the communist insurgency in Malaya, the British employed hundreds of Dayak men from Sarawak as trackers with expertise in jungle warfare. Many died at the hands of the communist insurgents. The idea of communism permanently leaves a black mark in the minds and hearts of many Dayaks in Sarawak. Meanwhile, Malaya's ongoing tensions with Indonesia, called a confrontasi, intensifies as Indonesia's military infiltrates Sarawak. A police station in the border town of Thabudu is attacked. That make the leaders, particularly the community leaders in rural Sarawak, more convinced that the policy in, that is being pushed by the British colonial civil servant thing has merit. For the Malay communities, these incidents are proof of their faith in the Malaysia plan. We'll not be able to be on our own. How to manage your resources? If you join other party, at least they can help us. In June 1963, Sarawak holds its first election to give voice to the people 
on their representatives in the government. And